Jesus. Jesus, we lift up. Jesus, we glorify. Let's lift our voices as a family of faith and say thank you Jesus you have done all things well and we thank you we thank you we thank you you are mighty we glorify you we glorify you ability we thank you Jesus we thank you Thank you for the testimonies, the sign, the acts of his wisdom. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Now pray and say, Father, I am here again. Let the dew from heaven come upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. They go from strength to strength. Everyone that appeared before the Lord in Zion. They go from strength to strength. Wisdom to wisdom. Grace to grace. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Let's just read one scripture. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you first to God. Please keep it there. Okay. I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace and the Bible says that word is able to number one build you up build you up and then to give you the inheritance is yours but it takes understanding to be a possessor it says that the word is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them who paid attention before you among them who have obtained these realities it says i commend you to two things one a person god like one would give a child to a caretaker he says and to the word of his grace i like you to pray from the depth of your heart and be serious while you are praying say father i have come to you and i have come to encounter your word it has capacity to build my life it has capacity to make me a possessor, a possessor of possibilities. Lift your voice and make sure you are praying. Lift your voice, make sure you are praying. Tonight, let your word prevail over our hearts in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends. Sing it again. It's from the pages of my heart. Let my worship begin that never ends. To the power of flesh. You're my God and your name is Yahweh.
one more time. Jesus, let the sick be healed tonight. Let the oppressed be delivered. Grant us illumination, access to light. In the name of Jesus, let us encounter your anointing and let it create possibilities in our lives. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back. I apologize. Last week, um, for the first time, couldn't make it for the miracle service. But I want us to appreciate Pastor Jimmy alongside all the leaders that were with him. It was such, such a powerful time last week. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sirs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I welcome everyone tonight. It's a great time. Let me just quickly acknowledge the assistant chaplain of Adama State University. He's here with us. Thank you so much, sir. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Wonderful people. They are the people who make me always want to go to Adama State. I mean, they would so, so pamper you. God bless you. If you're from Adama State, make sure you be like them. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I don't know if they are around. My dear friend told me he was going to be here, Dr. Lucas Satlong from Joss. Is he here? Oh, he's there. God bless you. And then his friend, Dr. John. Am I right? God bless you. Please, thank you. Let's honor them. Wonderful, wonderful men of God. They're medical doctors also. Thank you, sir, for coming. The Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy to yourself and say, I receive understanding. Say it again, I receive understanding. Turn it into prayer. Lord, grant me great understanding tonight. Understanding. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I'm going to be touching on a number of things and then we'll pray. Um, as I have traveled, especially in recent times, I have, I have been humbled, let me tell you sincerely, at, at the prophetic words that the Lord spoke to me many years ago. I have seen it in regions, campuses, and I am truly humbled to see that when God speaks, um, He is reliable. It pays to trust Him. It may not look like it, but if you trust Him, He will surprise you. Hallelujah. And I was sharing, I think, with our dear School of Ministry students yesterday during the lectures, and I was telling them that one of my personal goals in this life is to inspire my generation to love God to seek Him and to be revealers of His possibilities this is my inspiration to my generation I hope that one day a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love God to seek Him and not just to stop there that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he is one with God. Are we together now? And so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt, a contribution you can call it, to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know God, but we understand His ways. 
it's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this but let me tell you sincerely i love and i care about every one of you from the depth of my heart it, it shouldn't be me saying it but i say it because it's the truth it matters to me that your knowledge of god is rich it matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life it matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of god on earth in as much as the bible has revealed to us is systemic are we together god is the god of systems when you encounter his person then he grants you the ability to understand his ways his methodology his systems the results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of god intimacy here and there but then we must understand his ways listen let me tell you this our destinies the quality of our destinies on earth not only depend on the love of god for us but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 he says according as verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power had given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with god there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery babylon a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with god and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says they are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your christian experience now i have said it again and again we do not serve god just because of tea and bread listen very carefully 
we don't serve God because of the things that he gives us we serve him because of who he is and our love for him but he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him you encounter other things the ability to attend to the matters of life because in doing so you demonstrate that he is a good father number two in doing so you demonstrate dominion number three in doing so it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a full animal he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this body called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living i'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know god again ask them when we were teenagers 
one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell him but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation these are my contemplations the level of non-attention to god is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches Sundays, churches are full with members. Wednesday, activities. I'm talking of seeking the Lord. Not as a profession for a man of God where he gets salary at the end of the month. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Most people who serve the Lord is because they have given up on the matters of life. There is no hope of sending any child to school. There is no hope of anything. They know they will die whether or not they serve the Lord. So they say, okay, since I have two years left, let me just try to do something. No. Our generation has brought an option. Be poor and fail and serve the Lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living. Who gave us that option? As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. That one day I will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate, not cassettes. You and your four children are serving the Lord. And I say, by two o'clock, I thought you should be earning a living. And you say, He showed me another system. Now we are serving the Lord. And visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion. And watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming I'm sorry to say it and I, I love our parents. We have many of our elderly people here. I love them. But one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish. They did not remember that a generation was coming. So all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat. There's hardly any heritage given to a young man. Every young man starts almost from ground zero. Spiritually, financially, the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of God met you in one Sunday school. Some of you, salvation met you at the point of death. Did you know that for many of us, we never had the talk about God. We had godliness in a religious way. Every time there was Bible study, something happened. A sound in the zinc, demotion that was imminent, or something that sponsored some emotional reaction. Say, as for me, and my house say as for me and my house i will serve the lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the lord we will serve the lord i've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and i look at them my first concern is will your home serve the Lord will your life serve the Lord let me tell you there is a wicked Babylonian financial system there 
that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord. How can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent? It's a cost. You wake up by six, do a job to twelve, and Satan makes sure a stipend comes from there. And then you start another one till four. And your body is weak. But you know if you don't do this, you will not eat well. And you start another one. And in the next five years, that man dies and leaves seven children. Look at our dear mothers. Hi, something is wrong, go. Listen to me. I came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart. It's a vow. I build myself. That's the truth. You bail yourself through a commitment of obedience. But my job is to share this with you. That if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life, one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness. There is no shortcut to glory. Sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition. The sacrifice of your commitment, your life, your resources, your attention. You may not have the best of, of atmosphere and environment, but there is a determination that superimposes those things. For the sake of my generation, I will present Jesus. Are we blessed? The things that pertain unto life and godliness. There are some of us, and it really grieves my heart. As young as we are, condition as we call it, has taken away our focus from God. There are some of us here, early 20s, yet you have to be sending something home. God is calling you into ministry, but the focus is not there. The moment he's speaking, here comes the bills. Here comes the whatever. And you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school, our fathers, many of them largely disobedient and proud people, although they don't have any results. You see that? And they yoke all of that. The average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them. If all you see is poverty, you are not seeing well. You must see an attack on a generation. If all you see is sickness, you are not seeing well. You must see an attack. Look at the long-term effect of that. A day will come, our men will no longer go to church. Because they have to work all day on Sunday to add to it. It is vain to wake up in the morning. And to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child it, it, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of God this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing 
you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day you will be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that i made a mistake i cannot correct again many of us seated here the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and are paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we will talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of benihim today imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call but they were hijacked and they only see the visions in their parlor god shows them global events and they are there no grace and influence to effect it You read about these generals. Some of them can hold one year of prayer. You know, sometimes men of God hold prayer meetings. Is it not those who have eaten that will come? If I hold a prayer meeting five days in a week, Pastor Alpha, you're a lecturer. Except God grants you grace, should you can't be effective. You are only effective when you have options. And that's what Satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry i want to serve the lord not because i'm a preacher i want to serve the lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory i want to serve the lord i want to be the one to coach my children not sunday school son sit down let me teach you the bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you this no you and they look at you oh, what a child this guy his eyes have no and you feel so guilty for loving god and being attention and paying attention to him it's like the in thing now is rebellion you are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn lawless rebellious and proud that's what we are marketing to a generation that is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning if you must be a superhero be rebellious 
be a bully be everything but a christian the average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised There are young people, there are old people, but the teenagers don't come. It's not because it's night. They stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and Satan comes. He wants to capture that generation. But in the name of Jesus Christ, there are people who will say no way. There are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home, no way. Satan, there is no entrance. Huh? That gentleman who was talking about Aleko or whatever it is, look at now. That a time will come, your child will be saying, Mommy, we are from Benway, but what is that? You say, I settled it already. Don't worry. It was well settled. That, that discussion, just one day I will tell you about the story. That once upon a time in our village, people don't reach 30, but I stood as an altar and I settled it. Are we together? And one of the deceptions, let me begin to build my discussion tonight now. One of the deceptions that I think God is granting me grace to connect tonight is what I call the danger of imbalance. Write it down. The danger, the catastrophic danger of imbalance. It not only matters that we communicate truth. It matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of God. Everybody say the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is a definition of all his intention. Everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of God for that dispensation. And one of the things that you see Satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest, seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for God. He now begins to sell imbalance to believers. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie let's examine a few things before i talk about imbalance i shared one time about three great errors that the lord revealed to me in the body of christ if you remember when we were talking about the body of christ let me do a quick recap that the lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of Christ. The first error is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. He said, The Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. We're examining the first error now. Giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils. Everyone say the doctrine of devils. Another word for this is apostasy. Apostasy, a deviation from God's known pattern of operation. Apostasy. The first error that the body of Christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy. Listen to my message, the apostate church. Apostasy, a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from God's pattern. Two things there. A deviation from the truth is called apostasy. But a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy. Even if the information is correct, but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong, it is still apostasy. Are we together? In God's dealings with men, both the information and the pattern are important. Not just the information. Don't just say the most important thing is that I'm healed. The most important thing is that I prosper. The most important thing is that I get anointed. No, sir, there is a predefined pattern 
when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not sick but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a Jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me is none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an armed robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we lead as mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg
Yes, he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth. You just rub it on your leg. Now, that, that's a body consciousness. At least I didn't buy it, but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth. Because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts. And he said, no, no, let me show you another formula. You can apply it in the leg, but you can touch the teeth. That means I can pray from Zaria and God can preserve Kenneth Copeland. Because it is the body. I can hear that there is an attack on a man of God. And not say, after all, they don't listen. Say, no, no, Lord. This whatever it is, he's part of the body. His integrity is our integrity as the body. And Lord, arise in your mercy for your namesake. But we keep becoming individualistic. You ask believers, what is your pride? Our pride. Let me tell you the pride of our generation. Three things. One, revelation. Rema. The extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth. And nothing is wrong with that. Right? Greek words, Hebrew words, play around with all kinds of concordances. And then dish out mysteries. We love that. Two. Prophecy. If I give you a prophetic word, which is not bad. Three, anointing. And our definition of anointing is fall down. Not result. Fall down. Just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something. And so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit. We are looking for revelation. We are looking for an ability to communicate which is, 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 is to be desired. And then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting, people just fall up and down. And when these things happen, we believe that we are fine. And we don't extend the scope of our alliance to God to extend beyond our personal comfort to think body. In terms of administration, you know, I love Koinonia. Thank God this is where he's planted me. But in terms of the health of the church, I am passionately concerned about the body of Christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that I teach um, I have taught this already so is what I call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very carefully you see please come Ejimin can I use you when you see Ejimin one word you think wealth finances right well anointing too anointing at least last week you saw it praise God now watch this Chances are that if God has called a Jimmy to represent um, that dimension of maybe the Holy Spirit and finances to people, and I have a bias with finances, either as a result of men my mentality or my frustrations, two of them can cause the same thing. I can have a poor mentality or I can be secretly frustrated. Now, if there is an imbalance in a Jimmy's life or his way of communicating that, chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well, somewhere a man of God was talking about those who were saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere, you know, trying to be sarcastic. That man himself does not pray in tongues. He doesn't believe it. But there is no, there is no legitimate case for him to fight it. So he now routes through a church or a man of God that he sees teaching people. He now uses that one exception. This is how you know error is exaggerated. A man of God or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance. You know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction. The goal is to help manage intimidation. Are we together now? So Ejimi talks about money and all of that. 
and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that and all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but I'm exposing Lucifer. There is something Satan is doing in the, especially among we men of God, that God has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous. Pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have, we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything. Every man of God is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one will say what is the meaning of warfare the other one will say keep waiting demons are coming see the, let me tell you this let me tell you this listen very carefully listen carefully if we do not trust god to rise up and correct these imbalances we are going to authorize satan to destroy us god's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth if god gives me an assignment and says apostle through you the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just we say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services 
he said yes he said come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are, are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now yes this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received his breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling he said what kind of church is this you don't preach here yeah? I want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together in balance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with god and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why god limits you like this 
so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if god has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and i don't walk say in miracles and sam come sam sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with sam it now supplies a dimension of god that i wouldn't have seen are we together now for some the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the god almighty god that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then i reject you i say sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them god is with them but they believe god is not with each other you see that mistake Benjamin, please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse the bible was not open straight to power and he said you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of god turn to philippians as you see them just snoring once you just ah, 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 this is, that's right this is i mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is the, the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and he's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete it is one of the hardest things for men of god to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of christ was seen the seven lampstands i had a voice when i turned i didn't see christ I saw the complete church with all the dimensions when i saw the complete church i saw the fullness of christ if i had seen two of them i would see only his hands and think god is a hand then i see another church and see his eyes 
and think all to God is prophecy. Then I see another church and I see his legs and I think all in life is progress. But the complete church revealed the complete Christ. Is God speaking to us? This is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination. And so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say, look, all those power guys, don't mind them. All those revelation guys, the Bible says money answer it. That's the members answering him now. All things. Whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer, a millionaire, that money cannot do anything about. Are we together now? Answer it all things. And if any of his members dare ask him and say, Sir, why don't the power of God work in you? Say, Are you stupid? Am I not rich? Is that not power? You see? That person becomes a disloyal person. Imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions. Pastor, we don't pray in tongues in this church, but is it alright? Don't ever ask me. I am this, I am that. Don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets. Man of God, is it okay if I meet a man of God to hear the counsel of God? No! The word is everything. Just focus on the word. Don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you. Whereas that man is in utter confusion. And five minutes of this ministry can correct ten years in his life. Many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of God is. But they refuse because the pastor has the hand of God. And they keep seeing the hand of God. The hand does not see. It only holds what the eyes see. Listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now. Some of us are in ministry. Some of us are leaders. And already, we are, if we are not careful, we are, get, we are getting into big error. We've been mentored by all kinds of people. That's why I see as a man of God, if God gives you any influence over people, go and pray and say, Lord, let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns. I say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said no, let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia i am apostle i'm the owner of zaria god gave it to me it's my property now this is why men of god don't sleep this is why men of god yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will i swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't i i mean i, I should swear that what or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him i said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm. whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir thank you. exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way god calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance 
and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from god where god can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey jimmy if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of god to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body and that element is not prayer that element is not fasting that element is not even revelation that element is genuine love for the body not for god for the body you will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body you can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred you can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment you can't correct the body from the standpoint of error it's impossible if i hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake i don't have the right to correct him because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there let me tell you this i travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me i go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet i am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at christ in every church you will find him let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw jesus in that tomb is it in your bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level it's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day 
in the midst of his confusion he would tell you T.L. Osborne came to Lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and T.L. Osborne touched his head he said that's where he got it pastor I know you don't preach well but I just found out you are carrying something I need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well I was impressed he said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what I need now is what you carry there is no man of God that comes to my life that I cannot receive anything from. No. That's why I see some of our fathers. I don't sit down and say, oh, revelation, revelation. There are places I travel to minister, I already know that they may not have that level of word content. But when it's time to pray, I'm humble. Please, reveal it to me. Many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young Gicho. what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later on kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of laps will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of God is diminishing. It will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous, but you don't have a heart for God. By the grace of God, I want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life, when they come to passion for God, you are there. Prayer, you are there. Not because I have all, but I know how to bring all. I travel somewhere and I see a man of God ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adam our state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, it was a starting point for the churches again while I preached and saw the way they honored me I asked myself a question I said with all this mouth I made if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram will I denounce Christ don't be too fast they me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there, a pastor can go out in the morning and say, Wife, if you don't see me, just know that I died for Christ. That means there is a grace. You say the man is not praying in tongues, but you who is praying in tongues, you run away at a sound on your zinc. This guy is standing and watching a gun. Do you think it is normal? No. By faith, Abel offered. It takes something to offer yourself. Now, a wise man will meet that man of God. And say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace 
I admit I don't have it. I admit that dimension has been opened up to you. I humble myself, sir. It does not make you small. This is what we will never do as men of God. Our pride will never allow us. We will hide and listen to tapes in the secret. Hi. And some of you are already learning those kinds of things. You never see yourselves and celebrate yourself. That guy is Pastor Femi. Pastor Femi of where? Rema. Which, which Rema? Ah, please, I came into this town and I'm a man of God already. Who is this pastor? Of where? Under who? No. If you don't change from this, a generation will show that there was a lapse of God that we did not tap into. Don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of God. Don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet. There is a dimension only prophecy can birth. No amount of study can bring you there. There is a dimension only mental transformation can bring. So don't insult Mensa Otterbill and say, oh, these guys are just... Uh -uh. There is a dimension only Joyce Mayer can bring. There is a dimension only Benny Hinn can bring. There is a dimension only Dr. Lukoya can bring. There is a dimension only Papa Kumui can bring. You ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. You die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter. And the demons say, thank God for such a foolish generation. Are we together? Yeah. Then you see a man of God, Papa Iya Deboe can just stand. I'm mentioning names because I'm saying positive things about them. And because they are fathers indeed. May God bless you. And you're like, I, I need... And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin, they found out he's Igbo, a Nigerian. Are you learning? Who have you resented because of imbalance? Some of us right now, we love God, but we have been, we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth. I'm telling you, you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that Joshua Selman will never see, even if I fast for 400 days. It will not be covered by a demon. It will be covered by God himself. So that I will need Ejimi to see it. There is something Ejimi will never see until he looks at a Pastor Toby or a pastor here in Adamawa. There was something about God I learned when I went to Adamawa, sir. I, I say it. I have never seen a level of generosity from people like that. Women, some of them old enough to be my mother. And you see, I'll say it. Till today, when I go to movie, they see me, they start jumping, daddy, oh, yo, yo. People with doctors, lecturers, with such depth of humility. I don't know if I can do that for anybody. And while they do those things, I don't sit down with my pride and say, wow, you mean they acknowledge me this far? 
I sit and say, Lord, let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before I now die in the next 10 years because of pride. Do you see that God has put the remedy for our fall in the body? But because we could not tap into it, imbalance is a destroyer. There are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces. It's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire. Oh, I prophesy, your name is divine. Ah, man of God. And someone says, oh, these riffraffs, divine. Whereas, one day he tried to, he said, what's your name? Are you Gabriel? He said, no, I'm a Jimmy. And the other, ah. He said, no. He he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying we must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology uh -uh. how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy. The grace is not there. So he sees someone fasting dry. Two weeks. There's a man I know in Abuja. I don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him. One day maybe when we are doing something in Koinonia. And he honors me a lot. I'm sure I'll bring him one day to pray. That man can go for. And no food, no water. Not that you drink water in the night. Dry. If that man prays, even standing close to him, you will feel as if they are electrocuting you. I literally mean it. There is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa! Before, I'm, no, I'm serious. I really am serious. That guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection. The kind of power that is in that man's voice. Yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down. Sometimes I'm tempted to say, stand up, oh. You better stand up and lay hands on me. How you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it. The moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you. Oh, a beautiful song. Look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing. I was just listening to his speech. I said, who oh, dash monkey banana? Let me try that thing. I was in a Okuta. My voice ceased just because it was raining. Yes, someone shouting. <laughs> Are we together? Now, don't forget. For those of you who know a little about me, I was once a music director. I'm not naive musically. But now I carry my pride and try what he's doing and that's the end of it. There's no koinonia for one month. So I can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him. And say it's not all about pitch. The most important thing is the message. No sir, we need the pitch too. Otherwise, recite a poem. Don't sing. It's not all about prosperity. Okay? Carry everything in your house and give to the poor. The blogger who is talking is using an iPad that he bought 250,000 and say it's not all about prosperity. Are we together? It's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there. It's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you. So you know prayer is important. It's not all about fasting, yet people are fasting for you. It's not all about prophecy, yet you call and say, uh, promise, just find out whether God is saying something around this. I'm agreeing with you. It's just that I, I'm not, I have something I just want to, I won't tell you because I, it's pride. Just say, help me, sir. I'm trusting to hear something. I'm a man of God too, but there's, there's this, the vision is hazy. I'm not seeing very well. What is there? Does it mean you are not born again? A hazy vision is something that happens to everybody. Jesus touched people many times. Are we together? You must reject imbalance. The imbalance that comes in approaching the body 
the imbalance in camping around a dimension has revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what God has distributed in the body you must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace there is something I've learned from our children that no adult can teach me no matter how simple and well behaved you are these children have taught something they have taught me faith they have taught me courage some of do you know some of these little children are in prayer department am i right prayer department they don't miss it so if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have Pray. you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride closed your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benny i need to get some more from kenneth copeland I need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people Dr. Luca and Dr. John sent me a text and they said, Apostle, we are coming over. And I said, oh dear, I love you. When I was told, I was told that since around 4 a.m. or so, this is the assistant chaplain. He's also a man of God himself. But he came here since around 4 to sit down. What is there about a man? The veil has been torn and it tears and you, you don't enter. The veil has been torn, you are still poor. The veil has been torn, you are still this. Whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of it all. There are people who must assist you in life, otherwise you will never rise. It's not pride. One of the things that God helps me to do at the beginning of the year, I go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of CGC. I go and greet them. And get down on my knees with just a little I honor them and I get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me I won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if I were their age I don't know if I would submit to a small boy like this so Lord help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me where we don't have anything yet we make a lot of noise lord deliver me from it so that i can look at one of these our little ones tomorrow and say apostle i saw myself laying hands on you and i said do it the girl is shaking i said i said do it and she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult as god says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago i tried to pray for a woman i think somewhere in abuja also i can't remember i prayed for that woman i have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition I couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me i encouraged this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started it was just about to start 
I said, Lord, how can a man be this helpless? I came in your name, bragged in your name. If you see the scriptures I was quoting, quoted this, 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 the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power and all that. There was no power. Yet the Bible says in my name, I did it, it didn't work. That meant I need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the Bible was saying. Because it's clear I did not get what Jesus was saying. Are we together? And yet I watched Benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song. 40 wheelchairs. 40. Brothers and sisters, this thing is not magic. If you don't have it, find it. Because it is there. If it is not in your life, it is not missing. It only requires the humility to search. You desire the prophetic and it's not in your life, it is available. It will take your humility to search. Man of God, I have prayed, but I know God has directed me. But I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia. And the moment you are talking, the Lord just tells the person Lafia. And he says, the Lord is sending me to Lafia. In one minute, the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align. Instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia, just when you round up the fast, you hear a choir ball. And as soon as you round up the fast, you hear just. You see that? Whatever is a limitation to you, we are going to pray. Please listen carefully. Whatever is a limitation to you, the word limitation is relative. Everything you need is already resident within the body. If your life is poor, God did not make it so. You ignore the grace that conveys that possibility. If your prayer life is dead, it is not God's will. You have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon. If you do not have access to the deep things of God, it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance, the necessity of the word of God. I look at people and with all humility, I know they have stopped growing. They've not backslidden, but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say, Oh God, bring in other dimensions that are not here. They stood there. And you know that's not their best. That's not their greatest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight is my prayer that God will deliver us from the error of imbalance. That we will escape the danger of imbalance. 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 Imbalance that we will not trivialize the dimension of god that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts i can't be benny Hinn and kenneth copeland and joyce mayer and td jakes and bishop oyedepo and papa Ia deboe at the same time with the same degree no sir i have to be one of them but i can enjoy what is on bishop oyedepo papa adeboe benny Hinn. i can enjoy it through the humility of participations, the word koinonia, sharing together, the ability to extend your hand through humility, to say, sir, I have seen the dimension of God's grace in your life, and I'm open to let it work in my life. And honor becomes the key to that access. And all of a sudden, you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace. People have prayed for me in my life. I have been a product of many people's prayers. I have been surprised at how powerful the body of Christ is. I have prayed for people. And sometimes I look at what they call a mountain and I am shocked. Because I know how easy that problem can be solved. And in my mind sometimes I wonder, where, where were you? 
why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in god for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only walking in koinonia brothers and sisters god is walking across zaria god is walking across the north god is walking across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it blessed me so much Are we blessed we are going to pray father my my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher he said prosperity preachers are rubbish now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house although a preacher of the gospel lord my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing close your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance 
that has come through imbalance. This imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be. Go ahead and pray. The reason why I am not blessed in all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of God from my life. If I opened up myself to the healing ministry, I would have carried that healing anointing. My church would have been a church that experienced this healing. I rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life. Lord, I ask for mercy. I've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God. Now I've gotten into witchcraft and error. I've become a slave to prophets. Have mercy on me and let me return back to the word. I've been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of God. All I look for now is power. Lord, have mercy. Take away that imbalance from my life. Outside, make sure you are praying everywhere. Pray. The error, the danger, the destructive calamity that imbalance brings. Lord, I've ignored the anointing and all I do is just an empty theological Bible study without the power, without grace. So my church, my business, my family has no genuine anointing. Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence. Now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence. I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence. There are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry for lack of excellence through threw them away. I received that dimension. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. There is not, maybe not in Koinonia, but I observe the body of Christ and I see a widespread of prayerlessness. People don't pray again. Pray for me. That's the language of people. Oh, you are going for, please pray for us. So, and people don't pray. You know why? Because in a bid to balance this, we have insulted every prayer warrior, insulted anyone, any church that prays. Oh, these are just noise makers. It's all about money. And we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body. No discernment. People don't pray. People don't travel. Gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the God of heaven. Now people fast and all, they just want cheap things. Oh man of God, let me sow a seed. Just touch my head. There are some things, it's not just by impartation. You must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven. We are going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, what dimension is needed for my next level? Open me up unto it, O God. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season, then I open up my spirit for it. If it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension, if it's a healthy, mental, transformed mind, Lord, I receive that dimension. Are we praying, please? If it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need lord balance my life lord balance my life balance my church balance my business balance my understanding balance my life balance my life Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate this dimension as coming from you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen to me. We're rounding up. There are very anointed people. Very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak. And they throw you away back to the prison. Although you can interpret dreams, you didn't understand the protocol of seeing Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate. So you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria because no other region can accept you. You have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture. You travel to another person's culture, they jail you as a man of God because you do not understand the terms. There are other ministries that the revelation God is giving them should go to the whole earth. But your resentment for wealth has kept you poor. And so nobody can hear your voice. No tapes, no books, no nothing. Because prosperity that will give it wings is not there. I can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring. Because I see prayer warriors who the... The oldest person there may be 60 years. No car, no house, no school fees. The moment they are driving children from school fees, it's all, it's all the prayer warriors' children that return back home because they have ignored it. Now, let me tell you something about imbalance. Your imbalance makes you represent, misrepresent God to your territory because they are depending, unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about God. Make sure you give them a balanced perception. Don't present to them a God who empowers people and removes prosperity. Don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell. But they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles. They destroy their homes. Half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry, there is no teaching priest. There is power, but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together. Are we together? Or you can have a crowd of people who never pray. The prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour. Because that dimension has been ignored. We are going to pray one last prayer. Balance my life. Balance my life. Lift your voice and cry. Balance my life. Lord, I receive leadership. Lord, I receive prayer. Lord, I, see, I receive wisdom through the word. Lord, I receive favor. Lord, I receive excellence. Lord, I receive the warfare dimension. I receive the prophetic. I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. I repent from criticizing any and every man of God. Regardless of the limitations, I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia. I receive the dimension that brings speed, I receive. The dimension that brings establishment, I receive. The dimension that brings glory, I receive. The dimension that brings increase, I receive. Are you praying? Lord, until now, I've not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I thought it was just something for Pentecostals. But right now, I open my spirit to receive. It's a dimension needed in my life. In your name, we will rise. I don't know you reign in 
add one more prayer. Lord, put a dimension of love for the body in me. Love, love. When there is no love, criticism will remain. When there is no love, sarcasm and resentment will remain. Open your mouth and cry. Love for the body. Love for every church. Love for every man of God. Regardless of their dimensions. Regardless of their limitations, regardless of their imperfections, Lord, we embrace them, we love them. If they are part of the body, they are the beloved. Lift your voice. No longer will I resent any man of God. No longer will I resent any church. No longer will I resent any fellowship, any gathering of believers. My propositions against them may be legitimate, but it still is not enough reason. Even if you are not part of them, wish them well. Even if you are not part of that church, wish them well. Even if you are not part of that prayer group, wish them well. Even if you are not part of that Christian organization, wish them well. You are not part of the mission agent, wish them well. Talk well about them. Talk well about their leader. Hallelujah. Let me pray a prayer for you. From the depth of my heart, I want to pray for you. Listen, I have gotten more results in my life from loving the body than from praying. Believe me. I have gotten more results in my life just from loving the body than I have from my prayer life. There are things I have not prayed for. The love for the body brought it to me. There are dimensions that my love, I love the body of Christ. There is no way I have not ministered and there is no way I will not minister. There is no way I will see a man of God and have to turn and leave him and say, oh, you are from this. No. I have many friends today, great people. We don't believe many things. We don't agree in many things. Yet it is still too small a reason. You don't have to agree with people to love them. You must agree to work together. But you can disagree and still love them. You believe in tongues. I don't believe in tongues. No problem. You pray your tongues. We can't work together. But I can love you. You believe in finances. I don't believe in finance. No problem. I sit with my broke life. After all, Lazarus and Abraham, they all went to heaven. So you can sit the way you want and shortchange yourself. You believe in finance. You don't believe in prayer. Okay, fine. I, I can. But this hatred. Do you believe in finance? No. Go. Do you believe in prayer? No. Do you believe in wearing trousers? No. Go. Do you believe in tying your hair? No. Go. Do you believe in praying, shouting? No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever be part of that nonsense. You will think it's a good thing until you watch yourself destroy yourself. Are we together? Listen. When you come to my house, I have a modus operandi. I have a system in my own house because it is my house. But when I go to your house, even if I see what is not permissible in my house, in your house, I must sustain a system of accommodation. There is a way we do service here in Koinonia. You don't, except someone is under the anointing. You don't see somebody just run and come and fall down here. He may kneel down, may lie down there. But you don't find that. There are churches you go to that during praise and worship, the man of God is jumping. Another member outside will come and be jumping with the man of God and they are sweating. Don't just see that and say, God forbid, what is going on here? Be careful. In the midst of the lampstand, Christ is still there. Are we together? You don't come and then you see a woman just because she's not wearing earrings, she's standing and see all these people. We have moved past this level. And you just say, who is this woman? Humble yourself and sit down and say, Lord, let this woman speak to me. You don't come and just because you see a woman maybe not covering her hair or whatever, preserve your perspective as revealed to you by God. 
but you must give allowance for the diversity of the body there are things i believe it will never change no matter where i go to there are convictions are we together but i'm able to open up myself and when i go to certain regions i make sure that i go through the sacrifice of aligning to their understanding there are places i cannot fly a shirt like this to go and minister not because it is wrong the context of their understanding will not allow them to receive of the grace of god upon my life there are even some that i cannot even wear suit because once your suit is excessively clean and flashy that in itself may not even suggest that you are serious spiritually so i can decide to just wear something that is plain even traditional i may not even wear something with many colors is the sacrifice so that there will be minimal distraction so they can receive it's called love for the body when you love the body there is no sacrifice that is too great if you are going to a church and they say to enter this church cover your head no i won't do this god no. carry your wrapper cover your head and enter and see jesus and let jesus minister to you and you go back when you do this you will see how your life will begin to grow because when the prophetess is coming and she's on trousers i don't say oh this is no what are you saying when the woman is coming and she doesn't have any earring when the man is coming and all of a sudden you see him looking poor and wretched you don't say all oh, this poor man what do you have to tell me when we do this then the lapses in our lives will be closed and we will see a new church that is rising complete perfected by the diversities of the body therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace to receive the multifaceted dimensions of god released through the body i release it upon you right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you that the grace to be and remain unresentful towards the body unresentful towards any and every church receive that grace i cast away from your life the spirit of cynicism and criticism based on differences that you do not appreciate i command that spirit to live your life forever i plant in you the fortitude to accommodate dimensions that are inconveniencing to you in the name of jesus christ the grace to overlook the weaknesses and the limitations in the body so as to receive the grace upon her receive it in jesus name the grace to sacrifice your convenience so as to find a dimension of christ resident within certain inconveniencing spheres i release that grace upon you now in the name of jesus christ every dimension of god that should be working in your life and is deficient in the name of jesus christ i pray that by the mercy of god may he navigate that dimension back to your life in the name of jesus christ I pray for the spirit of humility that the pride that makes you see or think that any other person who is not you is not needed in your spiritual growth process I take away that pride forever in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you from tonight may you begin to execute an uncanny level of spiritual balance balance in the communication of the word of god balance in the dispensing of the anointing balance in your prosperity work balance in administration and excellence balance in character balance in wisdom and mental transformation balance in your passion for soul and souls and the evangelical dimension balance in the prophetic balance in your understanding of christ balance in your understanding of satan balance in your understanding of every dimension of your work with god i plant upon you an anointing for balance in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus thank you thank you jesus please let's keep standing everyone i want to pray right now 
for people here who have never please keep standing let's honor this who have never made a genuine decision for jesus you are an overflow one two three online whatever part of the nations of the world you are here and you are saying apostle if you will pray with me i am willing to hand my life entirely to jesus or you are saying apostle i love jesus but it is this imbalance that has robbed me of a dimension of spiritual seriousness i need fire i need restoration aside from overflow three i would request just for overflow three to walk to their projector stand because of distance if you are here overflow one and two and the main auditorium you are part of these people that have called to give your life to christ to rededicate your life and your all to him wherever you are please leave your seat very quickly and come up here very quickly let's appreciate them as they do so please very quickly very quickly there has to be someone who is saying apostle i am ready don't wait for someone to be the first make your way be bold bless you darling i believe there are more people if they are coming from outside clear the way for them please don't be ashamed make your way make your way quickly 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 we have just one or two minutes for that overflow one overflow two god bless you make your way quickly the spirit of god is speaking to you and saying son daughter it's time to have a new beginning it's time to start afresh are you still coming there has to be some more people there has to be some more people lord i run to you as the deer pans after the water brooks my soul thirsts for you come 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 god bless you hallelujah now all of you in front i want you to um just repeat after me i want to lead you to a very genuine genuine prayer of salvation let your heart be open god bless you people are still coming overflow three you can walk to your projector stand those online just listen to the prayer and follow along by faith lift your right hand and say truthfully speaking and passionately after me say lord jesus say it again lord jesus this night i have heard your word i declare say it i declare that i love you with all my heart this night i make jesus the lord of my heart i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare tonight that i'm a child of god my sins forgiven a new life given to me i receive grace to live a victorious christian life I receive grace to live a balanced Christian life. I receive grace to love the body of Christ and to receive from the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for bringing these ones. I pray that you will keep them. Let the grace that brings, the grace that keep, and the grace that lift, let it be released upon them in the name of jesus lord i pray that these ones will begin a journey from tonight that will only lead them to conformity conformity greatness glory power in the name of jesus christ i pray that every dimension of you that is missing in their lives that by the mystery of the body you will bring it back to them in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus name i pray amen god bless you now please i want you to follow uh, there's a lady waving her hands all of you this way in front there should be someone at overflow three and so you can follow please follow her right now the light may be covering you but there's someone at the other side of the light god bless you god bless you god bless you